Hello everyone, welcome back to another exciting video in this series, Neural Network from Scratch. In this video, we will look briefly at the regression problem and solve it using neural networks. For this, I am considering the example of car price prediction. Here, I need to predict the selling price of the car given these three inputs, age, kilometers and fuel type. This is a supervised problem, so our data set has target selling price for each example. The output required is the selling price, which is a real number. It's not a probability score. That's why this comes into regression task. The input features are age of the car, the kilometers driven so far, and the fuel type. Based on these three input features, we need to estimate the selling price of the car. Now, we need to build a neural network, which can be trained with this data. And upon learning, it should be able to predict the car price given these three inputs. Let's say I'm building this model for our use case. This is a simple three layer network. We should exclude the input layer when you are counting the number of layers because there is no computation happening in the input layer. So input layer is just a placeholder. So excluding the input layer, we have two hidden layers and one output layer. So it is a three layer network. Let's assume that our weights are randomly initialized. If you observe here, I have taken the weighted sum and applied ReLU activation on all the neurons of both the hidden layers. I have also computed the weighted sum in the output layer. Now here is the question. Which activation function should we use in this output layer? Do we actually need an activation function for regression here? What is the purpose of activation function? So in case of output layer, to restrict the output to a particular range. Like sigmoid gives the values between 0 and 1. We need a way to restrict the values between a specific range. But in regression problem, we don't need to have any restriction on the output value. It can be anything. I can't put a limit on the car price. It can be any real value. So there is no need to add any activation function in the output layer. For classification, we need an activation function in the output layer because we need the values between 0 and 1. But when you are doing regression, there is no need to have any activation function for the output layer. So the output layer is just a linear combination of all the inputs coming. In some of the books, they might call this having a linear activation function but it's nothing but uh, not having any activation function at all because this is just a linear combination so it is already a linear function there is no activation function per se here so the output layer has only weighted some computation here now let's train the model let us consider our first example these are my input features going to the network now these inputs get propagated through the whole network and finally we get some output here which is our price let's say we got the output as 5 lakhs here now how do i know if this is correct or not it might be wrong and if it is wrong then by how much how bad is our prediction here for that we need to calculate the error or loss and the objective of this whole training is to minimize that loss during the training we have seen already we already have the target selling price available to us this is how our training data looks like so the first three are the actual input features going to the network and the last one, which is the selling price, is the target for those features. I am representing this target as capital Y. It is a vector with n training examples. I am giving these features X as input to my network. And my network predicted the prices of all these examples, all these entries as these. This I am representing as Y hat, which is my predicted output. Now I have my predicted output, which is the network output. And I also have the targets. Now using these two values, I need to calculate the loss. So the loss function takes the predicted output from the network as well as the targets from the data set. Both of them are going as input for this loss function. And it calculates some difference between those two and gives a value. What exactly happens inside this loss function? We will see that in the coming videos. There are many loss functions. Each uses their own method for comparing the predicted output as well as targets. One simple way is to take the absolute difference between y hat and y which is this. So it's just an absolute difference between two vectors. So if you take the first example, it's 3.5 minus 3, which is 0.5. And if you take the second example, it's 4.75 minus 6.5, which is 1.75. So all the differences between Y and Y dash, all the differences will be summed up and we will get a single value for the loss. This total is the forward pass happening so far. Now we need to go backwards. It means we need to take this error or loss as a feedback and update our model parameters, which are our weights and biases. This is done by using a learning algorithm such as gradient descent. So this completes one training cycle. Now, once we update these parameters, we need to pass these inputs again. 
and again we will get the predicted output then we will calculate the loss and we again we will update the weights and biases so this is a continuous process which will continue till our loss reduces to a small value once this total process is done we will freeze this model and use it for predictions in this case this is for predicting the selling price of the car so this is how we use neural networks for regression task we have seen the classification example in the last video the difference between these two cases regression and classification are the choice of activation functions and the loss function apart from these all the other setup looks the same in the coming videos we will see different loss functions we use here for regression as well as classification thanks for watching see you there bye